Now I know how tough this year has been for our businesses and many will have had to dig deep into their budgets to provide sponsorship but they did indeed dig deep and ensured that tonight's awards go ahead. A big thank you to all of our sponsors. Thanks also go to James Dixon and the technical team for bringing tonight's event to life in such a spectacular fashion. And to Front Row Live, who thanks to the wonders of modern technology are streaming tonight's event so that people at home can also watch and enjoy. Massive thanks also to Richard Bailey and the whole team here at the Metrodome, who, as they always do, have done us proud. Thanks also to the judges who've given up their time to sift through the nominations and decide who the winners will be. They have an unenviable job in picking winners from what is a very strong field. Finally, I want to congratulate everyone who's been nominated for these incredible awards tonight. This is your night. Take the time to enjoy it and know that Barnsley is very proud of you. So, now it gives me very great pleasure to warmly welcome the wonderful Barnsley Youth Choir. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you.
quiet conversation. She's coming in 12.30 flight. Her little wings reflect the stars that guide me towards salvation. And I stop to no man along the way, hoping to find some old forgotten words or ancient To me, as if to say, Hurry, boy, it's waiting there for you. Can't take the love that drag me away from you. There's nothing that I wish you would make no more could ever do. Cause I bless the rays down in Africa. Gotta take some time to do the thing.
please put your hands together for the Barnsley Youth Choir. facing the right way. Good evening! <laughs> We're not on DVD, you can talk to us. Good evening! There we go. DVDs, what planet are you living on? I know, on? well, that was 2002. I'm, I'm right. still on Betamax, mate. <laughs> Do you remember when your dad got a hooky copy of E.T. on Betamax and told oh. no one to say anything? Don't say anything. He told you everyone at school next day. Did you have Betamax as well? Yeah. You, you, you can only go to a small bit of video shop, couldn't you? Oh, yeah, you could, the yeah. Exactly, yeah. You've got to find 50p for not rewinding it. <laughs> anyway. I'm from Addison. We didn't have VHS. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Can I just say what a joy it is to be back in this incredible room here at the Metrodome. And also, the bands the Youth Choir. Absolutely wow. incredible. Matt Wright and everyone involved in the bands the Youth Choir. Every single year I see them, I remember the wonderful Mel Dyke, who's with us this evening, taking me to the Emmanuel Church on Huddersfield Road and seeing them for the very first time, and I was just blown away. And I think it's the first time, Steve, you've seen them perform, just and especially see them do Africa. Africa. That is, have you seen that before? Oh, yeah. That yeah. was just the yeah. most moving thing ever. Absolutely incredible. I know we've filmed that. I want to go back and watch that again. <laughs> and I want to share that all over social media. Just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, welcome to the Proud of Barnsley Awards 2021. It's actually 737 days since we were last here to celebrate all that is good about life in town. Yes. Now, last year's event, of course, had to be cancelled for obvious reasons, but we hope by the time you leave here in a few hours, you'll all agree that Proud of Barnsley 2021 has been well worth the wait. Like every town and city across the country, and indeed across the world, coronavirus has cost Barnsley dearly. Sadly, the virus has claimed 972 lives in Barnsley. And just as tonight is about celebrating the achievements of our community heroes, it's also about remembering the people we've sadly lost. And we will, of course, be paying tribute to them later on. The stories you'll hear tonight are all about ordinary people doing extraordinary things in the most extraordinary of times. Whilst many of us busied ourselves binge watching Netflix or DVDs in Steve's case, painting our garden fences, stockpiling toilet rolls, <laughs> there were thankfully many, many, many more people doing absolutely fantastic work in our community. For some, this might have been about simple things like getting their neighbours shopping, collecting their prescriptions, or even just making phone calls or visits to make sure they were coping with lockdown. But for others, it meant making immense 
personal sacrifices. Indeed. Now, gathered here tonight are, for example, care home workers and NHS staff who isolated themselves from their families and friends to provide the, 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 well, they, just to make sure they remain COVID free, basically, so they could continue to do their jobs, looking after the most vulnerable people in our society. Now, there are also people who've recovered from really serious illness to run half marathons for charity, families who've turned the tragic loss of a loved one into something positive, really positive, and others who've selflessly dedicated years of their lives to making Barnsley a better place for all of us to live. Now, it's these selfless people and the hundreds of other nominees that we're here to celebrate tonight. The last 18 months have really taught us that good, old-fashioned community spirit is alive and well here in Barnsley. And the record number of nominations that we've had for this year's Proud of Barnsley Awards shows just that. So if you're ready, let's get down to business tonight and on with the first of our 17 awards this evening. I hand over to Steph for the first award. And the first award this evening is Children's Champion. This award will go to an individual who has inspired children and young people to achieve their fullest potential. It's about that believe, achieve thing, isn't it? It's sponsored by the uh, first of several new sponsors tonight, the Barnsley Healthcare Federation. Now, the Barnsley Healthcare Federation is a not-for-profit uh, not community interest company which aims to improve and enhance the way which primary care, things like GP surgeries, are delivered across the borough. Now, our finalists will have provided support when it was most needed and helped them achieve and overcome barriers. Let's have a look at this year's nominees for Children's Champion. Children's Champion. Our finalists are Rebecca Paddock, Adam Wigan, Mel Headley. Head teacher of Worsborough Common Primary School, Rebecca had been in her post for less than a year when the pandemic hit. Undeterred, she organised breakfast to be sent to pupils via Amazon and created small gifts to help cheer up pupils who were stuck indoors during lockdown. So I've been nominated uh, for the work that myself and my school did through lockdown, um, particularly lockdown one, so looking after the children, making sure that we were visible, so we went out and about and did visits and delivered presents, um, delivered breakfasts to um, the children and their families. So it was really important for us as a, as a team and as a school to make sure that the children knew that we were still there. Lots of the children that come to our school are vulnerable um, and being at home can be a, a lonely time so we made sure that we were out and about and um, we still social distance but we were out walking the streets and dropping off presents and waving at them just so that they were happy and um, the smiles that were on their faces were fantastic so we knew that it was very worthwhile. So. I'd like to just say thank you to the full school team because I'm sat here today, but actually it's it's not about me, it's around the full team. Um, I, I couldn't be where I am today without the, the staff and the families and the children. Um, so a massive thank you to everybody. Bus driver Adam helped cheer up students from Greenacre School when he dressed up to take them to school during the pandemic. Adam works for Wyatt Coaches and make sure pupils get to the school and back again safely. He went one step further to help boost spirits, and he dressed up as Father Christmas and other characters, performing Christmas songs. While Adam usually shies away from the limelight, a few pupils wanted to say how much his accents cheered them up. So Adam's a really good driver. He's uh, always shows up with a smile on his face, rain or shine. I'm uh, always happy to go above and beyond uh, for the pupils here at Greenacre School and we're really lucky to have him um, working with our children and young people. Well, Adam, he's very supportive with other kids and he is very, and he's very kind. What did you think when he dressed up as Santa Claus? Funny! <laughs> is he a good driver? Oh, good. Mel was nominated for a work as a Special Needs and Disability Coordinator at Cherrydale Primary School. She works with students with special needs and disabilities and regularly visited students' homes to make sure they and their families were coping well during the lockdowns. So my role is at Cherrydale to be the um, SENCO. I work with the children who need additional support. 
um, and make sure that they have all of their needs met really. So we set clear targets, we make sure that our parents are really informed so that they know what's going on, um, working well with different class teachers, different support staff, different professionals, parents and making sure that they've got everything that they need. So it had a massive impact, did the lockdown. Um, they obviously went in school so they needed additional support so I was going around to the houses, we were delivering food, um, food parcels, we were delivering work packages, um, generally just bits of support because a lot of the mental health um, was declining as well so we made sure that we helped with that as well. It was hard enough for adults to be able to cope through the lockdown, never mind the children, so to make them feel that we were still there supporting was really important. And nominees for Children's Champion. And here to present the award on behalf of Barnsley Healthcare Federation, please give a big hand for James Barker. Good evening, James. Thank you for joining us and thank you for uh, sponsoring this award. Okay, the winner of the first award at the 2021 Proud of Barnsley Awards is Rebecca Paddock. And the judges said that all the finalists went the extra mile to look after the needs of pupils during what were very uncertain times. The judges felt that Rebecca's calmness and leadership was fantastic. It was an amazing example of what this award should be about. The winner of the Children's Champion Award 2021 is Rebecca Paddock as she makes her way to the stage. Plenty to get through tonight. Steve's lots, on to our next award. Lots more still to do. Looking forward to it. Now it's time for the Young Superstar Award. Now, this award is sponsored by Barnsley College. With over 300 courses on offer and 9,000 current students, the college has been the chosen start point for the career of thousands of young people and adults, indeed, from Barnsley and beyond. Now, this award recognises the many achievements of children aiming to challenge stereotypes and highlighting the young role models who are helping make our town a better place to live. Let's take a look at the nominees. Young Superstar. Young star. The finalists are... Jack Fenton, Evan Lund, Annie Jones. Teenager Jack risked his own life to save a drowning child whilst on holiday in Skegness. The Kirkbalk student ran into the sea to save the child who was struggling while out swimming in the choppy sea. The Coast Guard revealed that without Jack's quick thinking actions and bravery, the child would undoubtedly have drowned. Uh, when I was on holiday, I was sat on beach and uh, I saw a boy that looked like he was drowning. The weather, well the ocean really was like really choppy. So he just swept him out and just kept going, really. Throwing his arms in the air, screaming for help. So I just took this inflatable ring type thing and ran down and swam out to him and pulled him onto it and brought him back. I found out after they were eight year old and like when I swam out to him, like he tried, he tried pulling like the thing to get on it and pulled me under a few times. But, uh, I managed to get him on it and bring him back to dry land. Uh, it felt like I felt good. But afterwards, it hit, me, it hit me a bit after, like when I knew what I did, but not like when I was doing it. It's like made me want to help 
people more that like are in situations like that. Evan took on the Great North run after his dad Darren died from COVID-19 last year. The 13-year-old, who also has autism, raised £1,135 for the NHS and ran past places such as Barley FC that reminded him of his dad. Darren, 52, died after suffering a cardiac arrest while in Barnsley Hospital's intensive care unit. Well, Evan wanted to initially to meet the doctors and nurses who cared for his dad in hospital. Um, but obviously because of um, the COVID, we weren't allowed. So um, Evan said, well, can't we raise some money instead? So, so that's why we did the virtual Great North Run and raise some funds for uh, NHS in memory of uh, Evan's dad, Darren Lunn. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, very proud of him. Very proud. <laughs> Six-year-old Annie Jones took pride in her long blonde hair. That is until she decided on a drastic trim to help a friend in need. When her friend, four-year-old Oliver Howe, was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumour, Annie knew she wanted to help other children just like Oliver. So she asked her mum, Kim, what she could do and came up with the idea of donating her hair to charity. She had more than 10 inches of her hair chopped off, which was then donated to the Little Princess Trust. Annie also raised £1,265, which was donated to Sheffield Children's Hospital. A further £900 was raised by her friends at Summer Lane Primary School, where both Annie and Oliver go to school. Now aged seven, Annie is looking forward to growing her hair long again and playing with her friend Oliver. Wow. What a category. Well, to present this award, would you please give a round of applause and welcome to the stage from Barnsley College, Gavin Batty. And the winner of the Young Superstar of the Year Award is... Jack Fenton. From the judges talked about Jack's quick thinking. I was quickly, literally making the hero of the day. Judges were especially impressed by how calmly he recounted the dramas of that day. A well earned win for an impressive young man. There were the comments from the judges Jack Fenton. Congratulations, Jack. Now on to our third award this evening at the Proud of Barnsley Awards. The School of the Year Award is sponsored by Barnsley Central MPE and Mayor of South Yorkshire. We heard him speak, of course, earlier on, the amazing Dan Jarvis. Now the pandemic has had a dramatic effect on our young people. Almost overnight, schools had to adapt to the challenges of not only ensuring their education could continue, God bless Microsoft Team and Zoom, uh, but they also had to take on the huge responsibility of looking after the mental well-being of pupils and staff. All of our finalists got top marks on this, as you'll see our video show. School of the Year, the finalists are Leeds Primary School, Royston Meadstead Primary School, Hoyland Common Primary School, Staff at the school on Laith's Lane, Addersley, delivered free school meals to more than 170 pupils throughout the lockdown. All meals were hand-cooked to ensure that no pupil went hungry. Well, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, there was an announcement that schools were going to close. So day one of, of lockdown, um, the, 
the staff were absolutely phenomenal and all rallied together wanting different jobs to make sure that children could get their, their, get their meals at home. The staff um, volunteered for different roles, I didn't have to ask anybody, they all put themselves forward, that's a real strength of the team. Um, so we had some people actually preparing food, helping the kitchen staff. We had a team that were on maps, locating where all the children lived and grouping them. And we had different teams that were volunteering to go out socially distanced and safely, but to actually deliver, deliver food to houses to make sure everybody got their, got their meals. We had a really positive reception from all of the families. It was lovely both for the staff and for the children to see each other because obviously the announcement that schools were closing came very suddenly. So it meant that not only could we take the food round, we could also have conversations to reassure the children about what was happening and that we were going to see them soon and we were keeping in contact and to support them with the learning as well as food. Royston Meadstead Primary School works with special needs pupils and ensured that all students had internet access during the lockdowns. Staff also coordinated a daily check-in to make sure that the children were able to see their friends. Their efforts ensured that 65% of all SEND children could still attend the school during lockdown. We feel it's really important for every single one of our children and families to feel like they're part of the Meadstead family. We made the decision to buy every child a device um, and bought enough mobile internet devices that all families could access the learning um, that was put on every day. The children in school and the children at home received the exact same um, educational diet, so the exact same lessons, so they all got to see the friends. No child was left isolated and children um, uh, would be able to interact online, which were really important to us that they got to see the friends online. And we also ensured that um, every school, free school meal child um, received a meal daily through food parcels or vouchers. Um, and it meant that we were able to see every child every day, whether it be online or in school, um, knowing that they'd got everything they need to have, um, the basic needs of food um, met, but also their emotional well-being um, and being able to socialise with friends, um, which we found, we surveyed every week and we found that one of the really key important things for our families that the children were able to see the friends. Daily updates were created by staff for pupils who were forced to self-isolate during lockdown. The updates included encouraging videos, tasks and other news from around the school to help boost the morale of pupils and staff. Yeah, during the pandemic we had to have a remote uh, learning approach and um, our, our staff were brilliant at making sure that we had a, uh, a really um, joined up approach to, uh, to home learning. Uh, we were keeping in touch with parents every single day, uh, keeping in touch with, with pupils as well. And, uh, so during, throughout the lockdowns we had daily updates, we uh, put encouraging videos on, so uh, it was just staff coming up with new and interesting and different ways of doing things. And I'm extremely proud of our staff that every single point they've gone above and beyond was expected of them and uh, I feel very fortunate to be a teacher at Oily Common. Our kids were really positive to uh, the remote learning offer that, that we provided as a school. I was so impressed with them, they engage really well, they enjoy, they, they uh, communicate with each other as well outside of the learning um, and it really meant that we could give them a full package of, uh, of learning beyond the classroom. Yeah, I think I think using things like remote learning has been a really real opportunity for us as a school to continue doing things in new and innovative ways as well. So we've we've continued elements of our remote learning back into the curriculum now as we've come back into school. Well, I will I will say our IT teams, part of the trust as well, have been absolutely phenomenal at making sure we've been able to give the uh, give them this offer, but also keeping in touch with staff as well and making sure that they get the support that that they need during lockdown. So there's the nominees for our third award tonight, which is School of the Year. And to present the award, will you please give a warm welcome to a man who's doing so much for our town, the main man himself. It's Mr. Dan Jarvis. Okay, let's find out who the winner is of School of the Year. The winner is... Royston Medstead Primary. Now the 
judges' comments. What a team at Royston Medstead. They help people with special needs. The help they give them is truly remarkable. Every people gets the chance to flourish and it's no surprise that this is not the first time this school has won an award. Royston Medstead Primary, congratulations. You are School of the Year 2021. to Royston Medstead Primary. On to our next award then. This is the award for Carer of the Year. Now, this category is sponsored by Burnsley Homes, the council's housing company responsible for managing 18,500 homes on their behalf. Now, this award recognises and celebrates the hard work and commitment of people who voluntarily look after family, partners or friends because they're ill, they're frail, or they have a disability, or they are just vulnerable. Let's take a look at the nominees. Carer of the Year, the finalists are Jody Morgan and Tom Wood, Laura Stevenson, Low Laves Care Home. The parents of seriously ill youngster Louis George Wood have raised more than 100,000 pounds to fund his treatment. Louis was born prematurely at just 23 weeks and suffers from a complex range of health issues. His parents have fundraised tirelessly for years in order to fund vital surgery that could allow him to walk and to be able to make home adaptations. Um, we set a fundraising campaign up to basically fundraise for Louis' surgery. Um, he's got cerebral palsy, quadriplegic and the treatment on Fiat is not available on NHS. The treatment itself or the surgery is called SDR. Um, it's a little incision in the spine that basically cuts the nerves that are sending the wrong signals to the muscles. The muscles are constantly contracting. This surgery will help him relax, reduce pain and give him a better, well, better life really. We've, we've carried out various events to do the fundraising um, from Jake's local football team organising a tournament um, whenever he comes down pays to play in the stalls. Um, people took it on themselves to organise things, different things, uh, Courage PC World did raffles. All of the communities donated things for us to raffle off um, and carried out their own sponsored walks, etc. Um, it's really been a community effort, as it's not just us that's done the fundraising. You just think those people in Barnsley like week in, week out donating money to the wing, just think, wow, you know, it's, it's been at Bounce Football Club, we've done the collections there and things. It, everybody, it is just lovely that Barnsley has come together for us. An army of Barnsley residents helped raise money for four-year-old Oliver Stevenson to receive vital treatment. Oliver was diagnosed with high-risk neuroblastoma in January 2020 and £230,000 was needed for life-saving treatment in New York, which can give him a much higher chance of surviving. Oliver was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer neuroblastoma in January 2020. Um, it was high risk, which means it's got a very high risk of relapse. 70% uh, chance of relapse and then if it, do, if it does relapse the chance of survival is just 1 in 10. So we found out about a treatment in New York, it's just a trial, nobody knows if it's going to work or not and it costs £210,000 to do it. So within weeks of him starting his chemotherapy we knew we were going for that treatment um, so we started fundraising straight away um, and then in March lockdown happened and everything kind of went to pot. So every event we had planned got cancelled and we thought this is going to be an impossible task. Uh, but we kept going and we did loads of fundraising online, did it all virtually and we ended up in the end um, with £269,000 
Um, and Oliver's almost finished his treatment in New York now. So yeah, it's been a very big journey, but we're almost there. Staff at the home gained first-hand experience of end-of-life care when they fulfilled a dying woman's last wish to return home for her final days. Ella Reed, 36, wanted to return to the home after contracting COVID-19 at Barsley Hospital. She lived with learning disabilities and autism and had been a resident at the home since 2013. Ella was a 36-year-old lady who was interested and involved in everything. Um, she, had a, she had a diagnosis of learning disability and autism, but she was the zest of any party. She loved lots of things and loved sports and loved people. But unfortunately, she, um, she had a, she had a, a longer term bowel issue in, in the sep about September when she went back into hospital again. She also con uh, contracted COVID because a, a, a care team were working that close with, with Ella, two other colleagues. Uh, moved out of their family home to help provide and support during that time too. So we had to get end, um, external training to come and train a staff in end of life care because the staff's next, never experienced like working with anybody on palliative care. So it were a big change but all of them staff did it for Ella because that's what Ella wanted. And you know, they were at her bedside every day, every day and every night. It was just, it was just huge because without Carol and, Carol and Kirsty supporting Ella for that two weeks, she wouldn't have had nobody to support that knew her because a lot of her team was self-isolated because of COVID and she was at end of life care. So uh, yeah, it's something, um, it's something I'll never forget in my career. Wow, again, some incredible stories. And to present the award, on behalf of Burnsley Homes, would you please welcome Amanda Bennett? And the winner of Carer of the Year is Laura Stevenson. <laughs> Now the comments from the judges, so the dedication of Laura and her family to raise the massive amount of money needed for Oliver's treatment was nothing short of inspirational. The fact much of this was achieved during lockdown was quite simply remarkable as well. Once again, let's hit it for Laura Stevenson as she makes her way to the stage. Burnsley Holmes as well for presenting that award. Wow, congratulations, Laura. So we're already uh, approaching the end of the first part of tonight's awards. If your tummy is rumbling, don't worry, your meal is on its way in a second. But we've got one more award to present before then. And this is the first of two special awards being presented tonight. For the, mayors of, for the mayor of Barnsley, should I say, special award, there is no shortlist. So... Let's find out more about the recipient and here to tell us, please welcome onto the stage, the Mayor of, Bounce, the Mayor of Barnsley, Councillor Caroline Makinson.
everyone. One of my main aims during my proud term as Mayor of Barnsley has been to try to help and support local charities and local children's charities especially. I was delighted to be offered the chance to present a special award at tonight's Proud of Barnsley event. But then I was faced with an headache of choosing exactly who would I pick to receive it. Talk about being careful what you wish for. There are so many people doing fantastic work right across the borough that I could have chosen. Indeed, I could have picked any one of the numerous people who feature on tonight's shortlist. And I really wish that I could give an award to every one of you. But, and I hope you agree with my choice, there is one person sitting amongst us tonight who has done so, so much to help young people. Recognition for his amazing generosity, both in terms of his time and his personal financial donations, is long overdue. Only last month, Dickie Bird, OBE, celebrated donating a staggering total of £1 million to children's charities. <laughs> this amazing milestone was reached when he donated another £15,000 to Leeds Congenital Heart Unit, where he has been an ambassador for four years. Closer to home, he has pledged more than £100,000 to our own Tiny Hearts Appeal at Barnsley Hospital. And his cash helped underpin the new neonatal unit, which is now a state-of-the-art facility. In his generosity is helping over 300 premature babies each year. And for that, everyone is extremely grateful. Dickie also actively encouraged others to donate, meaning that the target was reached, allowing work to get underway. In his own words, Dickie said he never had the chance to settle down and raise a family. But the difference he has made to the lives of all these Barnsley babies means just as much to him as it undoubtedly does to the families. So thank you, Dickie. We are proud that you support our children and young people. Sorry, I'm getting a bit. <laughs> and you will be forever our knight in shining armour. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the stage to receive the Mayor of Barnsley Special Award for Proud of Barnsley 2021, the one and only Dickie Bird OB. <laughs> Dickie, 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 don't leave the stage yet. We everyone in this town, you've done so much for everyone in this town. Is there anything you'd like to say? Well, I've all, well, well I, <laughs> I'm heartbroken, and to the mayoress, I mean, it's all, to present this to me is a marvellous occasion. I've always been Barnsley through and through. I was born in Barnsley. I'm the, I'm the son of a coal miner. 
and I love the child. I've, I've never left, I've, I've never left the child. <laughs> I've never left the child. The child has meant so much to me. And I, you know, and I do as much as I possibly can for the town. As the mayoress knows, I go to all the charity events and whatever. And the Barnsley people are the best people in the world. Yeah. Barnsley people are the salt of the earth. What they have to say, they will tell you to their face. And they're wonderful, wonderful people. And it's been my pleasure to spend all my life in Barnsley because it's the best little town in the world. It really is. It is. It Dick is. Dicky it's the Bird. Best town in the world. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, uh, Donated over a million pounds. And it means pounds. a lot to me. And it's a great pleasure for me to be here tonight. And I thank the mayoress from the bottom of my heart for this award. And I shall tell you this, I'll put them on my silver ears. And it will, you know, and it, it will always remember. I don't know how long I've got left in life. I'm 89 now. <laughs> You're going nowhere, Dickie. You're going, You're nowhere. going nowhere. You're going nowhere. <laughs> You're going nowhere. <laughs> I you may not. say, I'd like to leave, I'd, li I'd like to make the century. Under <laughs> not that. <laughs> Hell yes. Hell yes. The one, the only. Dickie Bird, over here. Incredible. Councillor Councillor Caroline Makinson as well for that special presentation. Wow. Well, we've still got lots more to come in part two. That's part one, done and dusted. We presented five awards so far. Still to come in part two, we're going to be handing out the award for community heroes, for volunteers, charities, and much, much more. But right now, it's time to pause. And as we'd say in parts of town, it's snap time. It's time for your dinner. Enjoy your food. We'll see you in part two. See Let's have a round of applause for all the winners in part one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of Proud of Barnsley 2021. Please put your hands together and welcome back to the stage your hosts for the evening, Steve White and Stephanie Hurst. Thank you. Hello. Welcome back. I know. I'm stuck. The, uh, the chocolate and the, uh, and the ice cream. There was a spare oh, so one at the good. side of me on my table. Really? And any other day I'd have had that. just wasn't, <laughs> wasn't happening tonight. Sometimes you need to have a word with yourself internally going, don't have the spare one. <laughs> don't, don't, don't have the spare one. Um, hi, I'm Stephanie Hurst uh, and with Steve White this evening from BBC good Radio evening. Sheffield. Thank you. I think this is our first official. We've known each other for like 20 years. Like we've that. just been talking about this in the, in the break, haven't we? I don't think we've... It's about 25 years we've yeah, been we've best friends. Yeah, we've never done anything And on we've never worked on stage mm. together. First time. So this can't go wrong at all in the second half, can it? Yeah, please <laughs> don't. Please don't. <laughs> right, OK, welcome back to the second half of Proud of Barnsley tonight. We've still got a dozen awards to hand out, including the mystery recipient of the Proud of Barnsley Special Recognition Award. Who will that go to, I wonder? You'll find out in a little while, maybe in around an hour's time or something like that. In the meantime, let's crack on with the second half of tonight's award. Let's indeed. Now, this next award we're going to give out is for the Charity Fundraiser of the Year. Now, uh, this award was launched to reflect the astonishing amount of fundraising work undertaken by the people of Barnsley. It's sponsored by GXO, which is the new name for XPO Logistics, a top 10 provider of global transportation and logistics solutions. It works closely with ASOS in Grimethorpe, playing a vital role in the online retail giant's continuing growth. Charity Fundraiser, let's take a look at the nominees. Charity Fundraiser, our finalists tonight are Dawn Cusworth, Matthew Newton, Paul Hallis. Dawn raised more than £19,000 for Bluebell Wood in memory of a daughter who died 
just days before her 10th birthday. Her daughter Mia spent her final days at the hospice after being diagnosed with a rare illness in 2018. Uh, Mia became ill quite suddenly. She was a normal, happy, healthy nine-year-old. She started with a virus, um, just seemed to get worse over the, over the few, next few days. We ended up going into Barnsley Hospital. Um, they then transferred us to Sheffield Children's and from there she was diagnosed with HLH. HLH is a rare condition where the body's fighting an infection but it then turns on the body and starts to attack the organs. I started fundraising for Global uh, just because of all the help they've given us, all the support. We've, we've attended Memorial Days there and we've had ongoing counselling as a family. The fundraising has been in many parts. We have did a charity ball, cake stalls at the school. We did the Mud Madness. So just a, a, a lot of a lot of different things have all come together to, to raise that money. Uh, the total raised for Global Wood was just over 19,000. It costs over 11,000 pound a day to keep Global Wood running. Um, and the 90% of that is raised through fundraising. Avid ice hockey fan Matthew has helped to raise more than 100,000 pounds for the children's hospital charity in the hope he can help sick children. He has created charity ice hockey matches after being inspired following a visit to the charity with his children. I've spent time at, children's, at the Sheffield Children's Hospital when I was a child and my son's also, my oldest son spent time there. So I wanted to do something to, to sort of help them. So I decided on doing ice hockey because I followed the Sheffield Steelers. I started playing and both my boys play as well. Um, so it's the obvious choice for me, it's something that I'm passionate about. So the ice hockey matches, it's people from all around the country to come and play. So I've done six Christmas ones, uh, the Christmas classics, and one summer classic. Money that I've raised combined is around about £130,000. I hope that the money gets spent where they need it. Um, it helps them to buy better equipment, equipment that won't be funded by the NHS. So it makes, makes a massive difference to the hospitals and obviously the treatment that they can give the patients. Just two years on after suffering a heart attack while in his early 30s, Paul Hallis has hit the road to complete a half marathon to raise money for charity. Paul described himself as fit and healthy before the incident, which was caused by a tear on the wall of his main artery, known as the spontaneous coronary artery dissection. After having the heart attack, Paul now hopes to raise awareness of the condition, which is more common in pregnant women. Paul ran a half marathon in September and raised £700 for the charity Beat SCAD in the process. Huge well done to all the nominees in that category. Now to present this award on behalf of GXO, would you please welcome to the stage, Ken Perrett. <laughs> so the winner of the Charity Fundraiser Award is Matthew Newton. Come on, Matthew! Let me tell you a little bit about what the judges said about Matthew as he makes his way to the stage. Matthew personified what this award is all about, using his passion for something to power his fundraising, a sustained and successful charity effort that gave many people lots of enjoyment. A round of applause for Matthew Newton. Thank you, Ken. 
Advancy 2021 Awards here at the Metrodome. On to our next award, which is award number seven, which is our Hospital Hero Award. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the last 18 months or so have really shown the true value of our wonderful NHS system. Seriously, where would we be without it? Barnsley Hospital is sponsoring this award, which aims to pay tribute to staff and volunteers at the hospital who go over and above to help patients or families during the anxious times while they or people they care for undergo treatment. Let's take a look at the nominees for Hospital Hero. Hospital Hero, the finalists are Leanne Batley, Ward 17, Leah Thompson, Leanne Batley is the lead nurse on Barnsley Hospital's intensive care unit. Having worked at the hospital for just shy of 18 months, her skills were put to the serious test when the pandemic hit last March. She describes the time as the most difficult of her career and revealed that the virus created unprecedented challenges not only for her department, but the NHS as a whole. At the height of the lockdown, the capacity of the intensive care unit had risen by 100% and Leanne would often have to spend long hours wearing hot and uncomfortable PPE. She also praised the hard work and dedication of her entire team. Staff working on Ward 17, the coronavirus ward, have been praised for their hard work and resilience during the unforgettable pandemic. The team has helped to save countless lives and staff regularly worked on their days off to provide care to the patients. So this time last year, Ward 17 was actually Ward 22 and we were Diabetes Medical Ward. Um, the second wave was hitting and the Trust wanted to create a Covid ward. So we relocated to Ward 17 and changed specialities so that we could care for the local population as a specialised area. So initially um, we had to learn a new speciality. Um, Covid was still quite new to us all. Um, there will, there's lots of differences with COVID. For example, that patients can deteriorate quickly. It was very difficult because as well as these being our local patients, we had obviously friends that we looked after and, and relatives and we've watched these people pass. Personally, when you're dealing face on with patients, it can be hard, but you learn to keep that professionalism, but it's when you go home it hits you. You're not really spending that quality time with your family because you're fetching work home with you because it's it's hard and it was quite soul destroying sometimes. Yeah. The difficulties at the time was that some of our staff had to shield and there were times when the staff were working 14 hour shifts just so that they could support the colleagues just to make sure that there were somebody there to keep the ward safe. This past year has been the most difficult in my nursing career but it's one that I've been the most proud to be able to participate in. Leah is one of eight midwives who work on the Ruby Group at Barnsley Hospital and has been praised for her life-saving work providing pre- and postnatal care to expectant mothers. She has been praised in particular for helping to create a close bond between the patient and midwife during pregnancy. I wanted to become a midwife after having Lily, my daughter, who is now 12, and seeing how midwifery care um, was given to me when I was an expectant mum. I've got a little boy as well, who's George, who's now three, who again I had at Barnsley Hospital. I've always enjoyed the medical side of things. I started work at the hospital as an admin worker. When I, when I left the hospital, I went into my midwifery training. But I, I've been nominated, I believe, for uh, a baby who was near the blue when I walked into the room the baby had stopped breathing mum had pressed the call buzzer and I'd entered the room being that lady's midwife I acted straight away pulling the emergency alarm and resuscitated the baby with my team that's on um, the birth centre at the hospital so baby's airways was obstructed and needed the life-saving treatment otherwise the outcome wouldn't have been good so the nomination came as a massive surprise because I work as part of a team, it's not just on my own. So everybody works so, so hard, so I feel really honoured to make it through to the final.
And here to present this award from Barnsley Hospital is Jane Mills. Hi Jane, welcome to the stage. So, um, very, very, very tough category indeed. The incredible work, as we said earlier, from all in our NHS system here in Barnsley. Um, but the winner is... The team on Ward 17. The comments from the judges were the team's unquestionable comments. Commitment, should I say, to saving lives really shone through. The staff on Ward 17 had no idea what they were looking themselves in front of the start of the pandemic. They just got on with their job. The winner of the Hospital Hero Award 2017. Barnsley, can we have a huge hand for all team award 17. Absolutely. Um, I know, it's up. amazing. Can I just say as well, um, uh, feel free to text your friends uh, if they want to watch tonight's ceremony, they can do. All they need to go, all they need to do is go to the Bards Chronicle website or the We Are Barnsley Facebook page. And uh, when, there's lots of people watching already, so if you are at home and you are watching this, uh, maybe you couldn't be here tonight, thank you for watching. But yeah, if you've got friends and family who want to watch tonight who couldn't make it or whatever, uh, We Are Barnsley Facebook page or the Barnsley Chronicle website and you'll be able to see this. Steve. Right, the next award then tonight is for Exceptional Achievement. Now, Exceptional Achievement is sponsored by ASOS, a company that's rapidly established itself as one of the world's leading names in the ever-expanding world of online retail. The winner of this award will have made an outstanding contribution to Barnsley in the last couple of years. Let's see who made this shortlist. Exceptional Achievement. The finalists are the team at Stairfoot Subway, Dennis Baker, staff at Jubilee House Residential Home. The staff at this sandwich shop delivered hundreds of food parcels and fed rough sleepers through the pandemic. They've also donated food to local care homes and regularly provide free meals to the armed forces and emergency services. So at the start of the pandemic, we decided that actually there was a lot of our community and, and our regular customers who were in need. Um, initially, we decided to actually support um, a lot of our local customers um, by having food packs, which um, were sort of sandwiches, crisps, cookies, products that we sold. Um, and we actually then saw the, the uptake was really high just with a sign up in the window for regular customers um, and that then sort of spread on to us deciding that actually we were going to make up external food parcels. We just approached a local supermarket and said well you know we're looking to support people, what is it you can do for us and, and they said well okay what we'll do is we'll package up the parcels and you know we'll put 15 to 20 key items in there. Um, and you just let us know daily how many you need and, and we'll get them ready for you for the following day. The reason it's important for us is we opened our business in 2013 um, and actually our community massively supported us. This was our way of, of giving a little bit back, you know, but in future years we are still carrying on incentives and still trying to support the community as, as best we can. 
Dennis saved the life of 72-year-old David Crogan, who went into cardiac arrest in the interchange. Dennis was on hand to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to the pensioner and help restart David's heart before an ambulance arrived to take over care. On the day I was just um, doing my duties as a customer service officer going around and patrolling the station. And uh, as I got to the main door, one of the girls from the uh, subway, bless her, came running around. So I was running around to the subway with them. Obviously David, he, um, he was on the floor. He was slumped against the counter. Uh, no colour in his face. So, so I just dove straight into it. I said, so you're to ambulance? Yes, yeah, right. Pull him on his back. No pulse. So I immediately just started doing the compressions, you know, it just kicks in. And I read her down to Yvonne, bless the other member of staff, and uh, to tell her to bring the defib. So as soon as we got him on, the machine's telling you, you know, shocking, it's all right, go on, bump, nothing. Got his on, bump, nothing. So I gave him two breaths. I started again. On the third shock, I felt the mice get a pulse back. The, uh, the oxygen was getting through to him. And what's happened is at the hospital they checked him over and he'd had an heart condition, which he didn't know about. And he planned on that day, from what we found out, that he was going to get a sandwich and a coffee and go for a walk on Pennine Trail. Nobody would have found him, I guess, you know. So yeah, he was very lucky that day. And they did come back to see us, you know, and, and it looked okay. The care home staff have been praised in particular after they isolated away from their friends and families to help keep their residents safe from the virus. They spent weeks away from their loved ones during the first lockdown and even slept in offices and tents in order to safely care for their vulnerable residents. Yeah, Jewelry House provides um, care centre to much care needed for, for care homes with, for people with learning disabilities. So our day-to-day -day working is making sure that we provide a care that is empowering for the individual and they have the quality of life that they can have. Uh, we had to have a two weeks where we had to isolate ourselves on site. So staff agreed to stay at Jubilee House for two weeks because of the rise of the, the, the coronavirus uh, rate. Because we couldn't have all the staff staying on site, so we had other staff who were at home and then they, what they were doing, they were bringing essentials for us at the door. We were able to continue to support residents and then ensuring that you know our staff are safe to themselves. I am really proud. I can't, you know, there's no words that can make me to thank the staff uh, to say, you know, what you have done. Everybody coming together and working together has made sure that we provide the utmost care for our residents. Wow, another great selection of amazing stories. To present this award on behalf of ASOS, please welcome back to the stage, Ken Perry from GXO. <laughs> and the winner of the Exceptional Achievement Award this year, the staff at Jubilee House. Now the judges' comments on these winners, just like the NHS staff at care homes had no idea the pandemic would play out the way it did or what it would mean for their own personal well-being. Now the team at Jubilee House made great sacrifices to look after the people in their care, which is why the judges have picked them as the winners of the Exceptional Achievement Award. Well done.
winners of the Exceptional Achievement Award tonight. Isn't this just wonderful? Celebrating time. Amazing, just amazing. Isn't it? Where we live. It's just the best place ever. Now, on to our next award, which is the Triumph Over Adversity Award. It's sponsored by City Fibre. This is the company responsible for bringing super fast fibre broadband to the borough. None of that kind of buffering when you're watching Netflix. Do you remember you used to like download? Do you remember when you first got internet you, years ago? You couldn't make a phone call at the same <laughs> you time as using the internet. You couldn't be on phone at the same time no, as no, using no, Tinder no, webnet. No, 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 no. Now, all of tonight's finalists have shown outstanding bravery in dealing with what life has thrown at them. So let's take a look at the nominees for Triumph Over Adversity. Triumph Over Adversity. The finalists are Daniel and Stacey Fleetwood, Rob and Kylie Osborne, Kelvin Binns. The parents of 14-year-old Lucas Fleetwood, who went to bed healthy but never woke up, have created a memorial garden in his memory. The Darton Academy people died of unknown causes after his first day back following the summer holidays. His parents raised more than £11,000 to create the garden and a space for grieving parents to visit and remember their own children. We, we lost Lucas, it was sudden. Um, there was no sign it was going to happen. Uh, we just come back a holiday, actually. So uh, it was the second day we were back in the country, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. He just had his first day at um, High school, school uh, with his brother, which it was his first day at big school, his brother. and. We had to make a, you know, the most difficult decision anybody, any parent has to make, which is where do you lay your child to rest? And just by chance, uh, reached out to uh, Barnsley Bereavement Services. Uh, it was just a um, chance phone call, really. I was expecting it not to go anywhere. Suggested, could we maybe consider, you know, going into partnership and create some kind of children's area in the crematorium? As I say, I was expecting a no, but she was really, you know, really uh, receptive to it. We kind of just got together, brainstormed, designed it, and it's just great to see it now come off the off the page to life. We worked with Peter and Steph at the Colibarian Company to um, design something a little bit different, and, and and the guys there came up with loads of great ideas. Uh, one one of been uh, this seeded card that um, you write down your message, and the card then is planted. So your message is planted and, and wildflowers grow out of that. And the use of the card has really took off now. Um, I come each week to, to top up the box there where the cards are held and it's empty. So it clearly shows that people are using this garden to write down their, their messages to their, to their loved ones. His friends have been, his friends will come and they'll write um, uh, a note on the, on the seed infused card. It's touched a lot of people in Barnsley. From uh, beginning to end, it's been really easy. You know, it's been a very difficult time and people like Steph, um, and Peter uh, and Joanne here at the crematorium have been absolutely fantastic and, and made it a breeze really, you know, uh, nothing much has been pushed back, they've been open to pretty much any suggestion that we've made um, and uh, re really, really pleased with how we've all come together and uh, yeah, created what you can see. Rob and Kylie have been campaigning for a change in the law to recognise stillbirth at an earlier stage after their twins died 17 weeks into the pregnancy. The pair want changes to be made after the deaths of their children were legally classed as miscarriage and not stillbirth. We lost us twin daughters um, back in March 2020. It was a difficult time for both me and my wife uh, after we'd been trying for so long. Um, we basically fought to try and save us children. Um, and then to be told in Isaac Law that as children are not recognisable in law, even though my wife's about to give birth to them, I think that just made it all up harder. Um, we, we wanted to start a campaign because we can't have as children recognised in Isaac Law, but we still can have a few wrong. But, um, uh, it don't make sense. We, at the minute we started a petition um, to the centre government, but coronavirus hit, 
Um, so we had to put everything on hold. But at the minute, we're currently drawing up letters to uh, Boris Johnson um, to tell him on his feelings and what we're going to be doing to fight for it all changing. Twelve-year-old Kelvin had a simple message for cancer when he was diagnosed with the illness for a second time. You picked the wrong kid. And he's lived up to this message, was given the all clear this summer. At just 18 months old, Kelvin was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which he fought for two and a half years. However, just as he was about to be given the all clear after five years in remission, he was dealt the devastating blow of a leukemia diagnosis. However, Kelvin didn't let that diagnosis get him down and he's fought the illness every step of the way, always with the biggest of smiles on his face. After spending more than half of his life undergoing chemotherapy, Kelvin finally celebrated his first treatment-free weekend in August and has gone from strength to strength ever since. He was able to start school in September and has since been enjoying life as a regular teenager. Wow. <laughs> nice that is really choke you up, don't they? To present the award for Triumph Over Adversity, will you please welcome from City Fiber, Natalie Ward. <laughs> Natalie, welcome to the stage. Now, the Triumph Over Adversity winner in what, as you've seen, is an incredibly tough category. But there can only be one winner. And the winner is Daniel and Stacey Fleetwood. <laughs> and the judges comment. Daniel and Stacey turned a heartbreaking tragedy into something that will provide great comfort to anyone unfortunate enough to have to experience what they have endured. Their, tra their story is a true definition of triumph over adversity. The winner this year at the 2021 Proud of Barnsley Awards, Daniel and Stacey Fleetwood. the judges in this not in this, in this year in any year really didn't end with the judges at all right moving on to our next award this is the award for charity of the year it's sponsored by mkb solicitors a leading law firm based in barnsley with a long established reputation and extensive specialist expertise in all manner of legal proceedings now, the aim of this award is to shine a light on the great work that charitable groups do across the borough. We all know of a really great charity, don't we? The shortlist is drawn from long-established groups, as well as groups that were only launched in the last few years, some newcomers in there as well. Regardless of their history, all these groups have one thing in common, offering a wealth of help, information, and support to people who use them. Let's see who's on the shortlist. Charity of the Year, the finalists are Henry's Hope, Barnsley Samaritans, Hope. Henry's Hope is a charity providing support for grieving parents from across the borough and was created by Bethany and Andy Pocock following the death of their son Henry. The couple work with grieving families and help provide hand and feet casts as keepsakes, also working with local libraries to make books about baby loss more accessible. Henry's Hope is a charity that supports bereaved parents um, after the loss of a baby or child. So we set up Henry's Hope in September 2019 
2019. Uh, we had Henry in 2017 in the south um, and we moved up here um, up north in 2018 um, and we found there was no support for bereaved families um, so we decided to be the support network so that's why we started connecting families with each other. Uh, we um, hold events, um, kind of family meetups, walks, bereavement groups. Different families need different support in different areas. Um, so we just kind of built that community for people who have lost a baby child. We set it up kind of in, in memory of Henry and just to kind of get that support out there because it wasn't already in place. Barsley Samaritans have worked to ensure residents are supported with their mental health throughout the pandemic. At its height, the charity was receiving calls every six seconds from people in need. Before the pandemic, the charity had worked with local sports teams to raise awareness, in particular, of men's mental health. Uh, we've been, we are a listening volunteer service, providing listening volunteer 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, which has continued through COVID and, and everything. Yeah, well, throughout the pandemic, we've done a million listening hours nationwide. Um, and we take about 10,000 calls a day. As well as that, we've done quite a lot of community outreach things. So there's lots of banners you'll see as you drive around Barnsley. There's banners pretty much everywhere. Yeah, and the, the, the thing with that is Barnsley, uh, Samaritans is committed to supporting this community in raising awareness that they're not alone. I mean, with this pandemic, that's why we've been, have got banners in this community. We've got in train stations, uh, in parks, cemeteries. Just saying that, I mean, just people know that, you know, for them and they're not alone with things. We also support schools, um, we've supported um, large businesses in Barnsley, um, we, we, we're literally available to help anybody uh, that needs listening, listening volunteers in Barnsley. Peter Robertshaw created Hope, helping others positively engage to help others after he suffered abuse as a youngster. The community group became a charity in February 2020 and was forced to take its services online during the pandemic. Open Community was set up in September 2017 um, as a community group because I wanted to make an impact to people's lives to give them somewhere safe to go because of the abuse I suffered as a child. So we became a charity in February 2020 which were an amazing opportunity because it means we can help more people and get more support. The work I do um, within Hope is um, toddler groups, cooking courses, holiday programmes and mental health support. The response we've seen with our clients have been amazing. We have had people who have been at a point of suicidal or losing their families uh, to having their long-term support. In the next couple of weeks, we will be opening a support hub in um, Peel Square. So that way we will have lots of services where people can drop in as well as a little charity shop in there to help raise funds. Incredibly well-deserved nominees, I'm sure you'll agree. To present the award on behalf of MKB Solicitors, would you please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Ben McFeely. <laughs> so the winner of the Charity of the Year Award this year is... It's Hope. Go on, Hope, bring yourself up to the stage. The comments from the judges about Hope, the devotion of Peter and his small team to creating this charity was very impressive to the judges. He's used his personal experience to do all he can to ensure help is available for people at a time when they might really, really need it. The winner of your Charity of the Year Award this year, Proud of Barnsley, it's Hope. Round of applause for these guys.
Apparently Peter's watching this at home. He can't be here tonight, he's isolated. So hello Peter, I love that they've been collecting this for you. So for Peter watching at home, clap a bit louder so he can hear you. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi, Peter. And all the team from Hope, well done. Charity of the year this year. Amazing. Yeah, as I said earlier, your friends and family can watch at home. Go to the We Are Barnsley Facebook page or the Barnsley Chronicle website and follow the links and they'll be able to watch it there. Now, on to award number 11 tonight. This is the Community Hero Award. This award reflects the sheer diversity of people who have served the community, often for many, many years. It's sponsored by Smart Door Solutions, a company which only a few years ago was actually on the shortlist in the new business startup category. I remember it well. Uh, the company has gone on to bigger and better things since then. Let's learn more about the finalists for Community Hero. Community Hero. Our finalists are Paul Goose, Abby Khan, Joanne Burge and Ashley Lawton. Bugler Paul played the last post every evening for nine months in memory of all the victims of the coronavirus pandemic. Through his efforts, Paul also managed to raise more than £10,000 for Barnsley Hospital. I played last post, uh, I started it on 29th of March. Uh, after learning that my old regimental sergeant major had passed away that morning so I wanted to show him a little bit of respect so I went out that night and played last post for him and the response that I got from people on Facebook uh, after I went live uh, was unbelievable so I thought I'd carry it on every night dedicating it to people who had passed away to Covid-19 uh, I did it from the 29th of March to up until New Year's Eve, which in total was 275 nights. Well, I raised uh, just over £10,000 for the intensive care unit at Barsley Hospital. While I was playing my bugle every night, I decided to start the fundraiser uh, on the 1st of July uh, with a community and businesses that donated were absolutely unbelievable. It makes me feel very, very proud of, of Cudworth and my friends and all the community. Uh, they, they've been absolutely outstanding for the support that they gave me. Alum's lounge owner, Abby, helped support his local community by delivering more than 2,500 meals to frontline workers and care homes during the lockdown. Even though the restaurant could not open its doors throughout the pandemic, Abby sent out the meals free of charge to those who were working on the front line. Throughout this pandemic, uh, we gave meals free to the hospital, to Barnsley Hospital, to some of the care homes, the hospice, the homeless, the needy, the single parents, anybody that, need, that needed feeding, you know, that needed help, that was struggling. So we gave food out to them free of charge. Uh, the amount of meals that we gave out in total was over 2,500. We gave 2,000 meals just to the hospital alone. And that was for the frontline staff, the ambulance workers, even some of the patients, you know, whoever needed feeding, you know, we were there for them. Uh, not being able to open the restaurant it affected us financially a lot. But throughout the pandemic, and especially now when people are still, you know, the furloughs finished, they need help, we're here for them. The feeling of community, you know, of giving, I feel this very, very important. You know, we should be there for each other. We should be there to help each other. Some people are less fortunate than us. We decided to do this because from 2014, we set the restaurant up. Barnsley supported us. And in Barnsley's time of need, we wanted to be there for them. The mother and daughter duo helped to feed hundreds of Doddoth residents by delivering food parcels. From October 2020 to April this year, the pair delivered the packages to Doddoth, Gilroyd and all the surrounding areas. 
Well, obviously we started this journey with food parcels because um, I actually saw a, a post on Facebook where somebody had advertised and said, I've got a food parcel, does anybody want it? Now I saw two ladies fighting over this parcel. So I just put a little post on Facebook and just put, you know, I, I don't think I realised how bad it was back mm -hmm. then. And I just put, I can't believe, like in this day and age, people are needing food parcels and the next thing, my Facebook went crazy. But we started off in our own villages, but we ended up going further afield to other communities that were out of our jurisdiction, but we still did it. And also with the way we did Christmas uh, hampers as well, boxes, and um, we couldn't have done that without the amazing Penniston Knitting Group. They were amazing. Um, and Barnsley, Barnsley Toy Bank. Yeah, took, we helped them out. Okay, it was a big team effort by, by December. Yeah, it was. Definitely. Every, every parcel, I think, was designed to that person. Yes. So we said, have you got any children? Because we had nappies and things, don't yeah. we? Didn't we? Tins of baby milk and obviously cats and dogs, do you have any pets? Yeah. So every box really was made for that family. For that, for that family. So the nominees for our 11th award tonight, which are Community Hero Award. Lee and Di Steele from our sponsors, Smart Door Solutions, are unfortunately unable to be here tonight. So will you please give a big hand to present the award on their behalf, a true Barnsley Football Club legend and winner of the Proud of Barnsley Special Recognition Award 2019, it's Brian Murphy. Brian, welcome to the stage. <laughs> Barry, I said Barry. Did I say Brian? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There's a mistake to me make publicly. Hello, everyone. Okay, on to the winner of the Community Hero Award. It's Abby Khan. Tonight, behind the headlines of the Frontline NHS staff, there was an army of supporters, people like Abby Khan and the team at Adams Lounge. They valued their support and they helped keep spirits high at what was a very uncertain time for everyone. Please give it up for the Community Hero Award. It's Abby Khan. I think I just looked down and Matt. George I'm just, Mildred. Yeah, I know yeah, what you're thinking. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, I am actually learning that. I think I actually, I've got undiagnosed just like, genuinely, I, I kid you not. Sometimes oh. I get word blindness. This happens occasionally. I do apologise. Nobody noticed. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. When it goes out live, we'll edit it. Yeah, we'll, we'll just right. edit it out, it's fine. So it's the Proud of Barnsley Awards 2021 here at the Metrodome. And it is, of course, it's a chance to be that. It's a chance to be proud. It's a chance to be celebratory of all the great achievements, of all the great amazing people that are in here tonight. I think we should have a round of applause for our nominees and winners so far Absolutely. this evening. But now this is a really special part of the evening where we all take a moment together because we all know somebody over the last two years who's no longer with us, people who may have even been in this room before at this awards and it's time now to remember those people. It's our tribute to people who we've said goodbye to since the last time we were here. 
And here to perform our special Proud of Barnsley tribute. Will you please welcome onto the stage from Barnsley Youth Choir for incredibly talented young people. Gemma Parker, Georgie Bennett, Hannah Rowe, and Tom Masters. said what I wanted to maybe even cried for you if I knew it would be the last time I would have broke my heart in two trying to save a part of you wish I could could have said goodbye, would have said what I wanted to, maybe even cried for you, if I knew it would be the last time, would have broke my heart in two, try to save a part of you. the 
Wow. Oh, my word. Absolutely, wow. Just incredible. From the Barnes, the Youth Choir. Wow. I've got to admit, even we weren't expecting that. Yeah. Oh, crikey. Saw a picture of my dad up there as well, which I didn't expect, which is, uh, would have been his, it was his funeral a, a year a ago A year today. ago today, we were yeah. talking how, you know, people like that and people we've just seen on there still bringing us all together at exactly. events like this. Mm. In fact, let's, on it. let's have another round of applause for all them. Please. And even anyone that wasn't on that, that we know he's not here anymore. Let's, let's hear it for them. Wow. Okay. We will be celebrating those people forevermore. That's what that's the high the, the whole idea of this event. We celebrate the great and good of Barnsley. And we do that by moving on to our next award tonight as well. This is the award for sporting achievement. Now Barnsley has produced many sporting greats over the years. Of course, we met some of them here tonight. And our sporting achievement award is sponsored by Barnsley Premier Leisure, the operators of this fantastic venue. In this category, we're looking for people or teams who are putting Barnsley on the sporting map. Let's see who made this shortlist. Sporting Achievement. The finalists are Bethany England, Ian Sagar, Sue Bailey, Green Moor Cricket Club. Footballer Bethany is Barnes' first Champions League finalist. The 27-year-old has been capped 10 times for England since 2019 and has won Player of the Year alongside the Women's Super League and League Cup with Chelsea. Hi 
everyone, I'd just like to say a massive thank you for the nomination for the Prouder Bansley Award. It's a big achievement for me, especially being a proud Bansley girl and looking at back on all I've achieved with Chelsea and England. It's been an incredible year and I want to say thank you again for all the nominations and good luck to everyone else on the night. Hoyland common man, 39-year-old Ian Sagar, brought back bronze for Team GB's wheelchair basketball squad after beating Spain, making him a two-time Paralympic medalist. Ian had missed out on a medal in London 2012, but managed to make a bronze four years later in Rio. Hello, my name's Ian Sagan. I play wheelchair basketball for Great Britain. Uh, this year's been quite uh, an exceptional year, um, coming out of COVID and uh, preparing for what's what's been a delayed Paralympics. Uh, unfortunately, our our coach contracted COVID four days before leaving for the Paralympics. So, as uh, as captain of the team, I had to take it on my on my shoulders a little bit more responsibility, and one of my teammates took on the role of, of coach. Uh, but going through the Paralympic Games with um, with all the restrictions in place was uh, a fantastic experience, a fantastic feeling, and uh, you know above all. Uh, we managed to come home with a medal, uh, a bronze medal at the Paralympic Games. Any Paralympic Games is uh, is very very special. So to come through this one with all the with all the setbacks and difficulties we've had to come up against, uh, just gives it that extra bit of extra bit of shine. So uh, I'm very thankful for for getting through it, and uh, I'm glad to have won my medal. Thanks. Bye. Sue won a Paralympic bronze medal in the table tennis doubles competition. Sue, 48, from Doddeth, has been competing in the table tennis Paralympic events since the year 2000, but this was a first time among the medals. I've played table tennis a long time. My mum and dad used to play when um, I was little, so I used to annoy them when um, I was about seven and they used to play in the league. Um, my dad started coaching me a long time ago. I went into a wheelchair full time when I was about 18. I've got a disability called Ella Stanlos. So at the moment I have about, at least on a bad day, 100 dislocations a day of every joint. So it's a very painful disease um, and it's something you can only, it's a degenerative disease. So I took up sort of several sports after a few years because initially I didn't know you could play sports from a wheelchair. So um, I took up archery, I took up shooting, tried a bit of table tennis and then I got seen by somebody from the GB squad and they asked me to go and start training with them. I was in the GB squad within a year. Uh, I started at my first Paralympics in Sydney in 2000 and I've just been to Tokyo which is my sixth Paralympic Games. Um, after winning every medal in Wales, um, double Commonwealth gold medalist, European champion and many other medals, it was the one that always eluded me and I finally got the bronze at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo that's just gone in the women's 4-5 team event. So at last I've uh, got the medal that I've sought for so long. The small village cricket club's promotion to the championship has been likened to Leicester City winning the Premier League. Green Moor were promoted from Division 1 into the Championship this summer with a game to spare and the village, whose population is only around 200, have since risen above South Yorkshire neighbours Rotherham Town. We're only a very small club, uh, top of the hill, out in no middle of nowhere, uh, and we've been promoted, uh, which really quite uh, an achievement for, for us. The Champions Division is the next to the top in the South Yorkshire League. Uh, we're only a tiny club at the side of, so you know, Rotherham, Sheffield United, you know, a big club, big, a lot of facilities and we think, come to tiny green moor. <laughs> we're very proud. Way through the seasons. Hey, we're top of the league here. Can we carry on with this? But anyway, they managed to carry it through. We had a congratulations from somebody from the league who said, Terrific, you know, you've done terrific, and it's not down to good luck, it is down to effort by so many people. And you are an example for others to learn from.
Amazing. So, to present the award on behalf of Barnsley Premier Leisure is Chief Executive Tim Wilson, along with our favourite cricket umpire, Dickie Bird OBE. <laughs> And the winner of the Sporting Achievements Award 2021 is... Sue Bailey! Comments for Sue's award. Sue's achievement shows that no one should ever give up on their dreams. Absolutely not. She always wanted a Paralympic, a Paralympic medal and was determined to keep going until she brought it home, which she did. Your Sporting Achievement Award winner this year, Sue Bailey. to thank you for me. I'd like to thank Steve, uh, Steve Alton. I don't know whether he's here tonight and his council members. I would like to, con uh, to thank Steve Alton and his, co his council members for bestowing on me the greatest, one of the greatest honours ever when they bestowed on me the freedom of the borough of Barnsley. That was a tremendous honour which well, I shall treasure. For all, among all the honours I've received, that stands out. And I would all like to, to thank Madam Mayor for the award tonight. Uh, and I'd like to say that I've tried to do my best for Barsley. And uh, as Sir Steve, Steve Orton knows, I don't know whether he's here tonight, but he's, I've tried to fulfil my great honour of being given the freedom of the borough. That was in 2000, Sir Steve. It only seems like yesterday. But these two honours I shall treasure for the rest of my life. They will go, for, they will go along with all the honours I've received. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And of course, uh, before that, congratulations to our winner, Sporting Achievement winner tonight, Sue Bailey. Now on to our next award this evening, which is for Community Group. This award is sponsored by Barnsley Community Voluntary Services. It's been working in the town for over 30 years and offers opportunities for people living across the borough to get involved and make a difference to life in their local communities. Now, this category this evening reflects the growing importance of community groups, often run entirely by volunteers who offer invaluable help, advice, and support to people who need it. Let's see who made the 2021 shortlist. Community Group of the Year. The finalists are Low Valley Flood Group, The Barsley Superstars, Penniston Round Table. 
Low Valley Flood Group is formed of residents who have been blighted by floods and have supported people with flood defences since their inception in the year 2007. The community group spent much of last year campaigning with councillors for flood defences across the borough and have continued to fundraise for repairs and sandbags. Well, it originally started in 2007 after that flood and Sue's husband was the chairperson then, but unfortunately he's since passed away. So then in 2019, people were saying, we ought to get the flood group going again. And they nominated Sue to be chairperson because of her husband, you know, so because she knew lots of things, lots of contacts. So this is how it's escalated from there. We raised funds um, to get resources for the community. Um, we've got um, flood sacks and everything, so everybody in the community has got some way to protect their own. Um, we did a lot of fundraising and raised quite a lot of money. Which enabled us to provide the flood sacks for the elderly especially, because they can't lift the ordinary sandbags. You know, these flood sacks are flat and they just put them there and then they fill with water as the flood comes up, so it's quite easy for them. And the community has come together. We've had some young men, I must say, who weren't even flooded, who live further away from us, and they were coming and filling the sandbags for us and distributing them to the elderly. So it's been a real community pull. The townwide scheme creates and delivers face coverings to residents. The initiative began at the start of last year's lockdown and raised more than £3,000 for Barsley Hospital Charity throughout the pandemic. Uh, Basel Superstars made over 15,000 face coverings during the pandemic. The idea of the mask came about from my day job. Um, I work for Barnsley Council and we wanted to do a project that uh, assisted other people and kept them uh, safe during Covid. All the face coverings that we gave out were free of charge, however, some people wanted to donate so we decided that our chosen charity would be the NHS and we managed to raise £3,500 for the NHS. The amount of volunteers we had uh, during uh, this project was 102. Uh, they did various tasks from the distribution of face coverings to uh, sewing face coverings. One of the best things from this project, I mean, it was a bleak time. We started in March, just as we were entering uh, the pandemic. One of, um, one of the best things is people really coming together to assist other people. And not only that, a lot of the volunteers that we work with went on to do other volunteering roles as well in the community and are still really active to this day. So it's absolutely fantastic what can be achieved. Penniston Round Table is formed of men aged 45 and under and helped to keep men active and social during the pandemic. The group members spent the pandemic delivering essentials to people in need and doing other good deeds in the community. Peniston Round Table is a group of lads in, who live locally in Peniston. Um, we're a social group and a charity and we work uh, putting on loads of different events in the community ranging from bonfire night that we just had recently, uh, we do like a, a kids Halloween event, we help out with gala and so we do those kind of things but we also meet up socially um, and, and try and have uh, drinks together and, and do like, we think, we think life's more fun if you can meet up with your mates, go out, have a great time but also do stuff for the community. Also, as Roundtable, also as part of um, a larger group called Love Thy Peniston, um, we set up uh, a sort of a network of people and local helpers who um, were looking to just do their bit during the pandemic. So a lot of people were housebound, couldn't get out to get um, provisions and that sort of thing. So one of the things that more that the table did was we set up this Peniston Action Line. Well, one, just to add to that, one of the things that we, we really noticed, I mean, in Peniston and Barnsley generally, there's so many people who want to get involved, so many people who want to help out, and we saw our role as kind of facilitating that. So, so many people out there who, who were delighted to go down to people's houses and, and drop things off for them, and it's just great to be able to, to be part of that and to help, to help make that happen. The Community Group Award this evening, I'm presenting the award on behalf of Barnsley 
CVS is Melvin Lunn. Hi Melvin, welcome to the stage. Now, the winner of the Community Group Award tonight here at the 2021 Proud of Barnsley Awards is Low Valley Food Group. Food Group. Low Valley Flood Group, a perfect example of people coming together to help each other out at a time of crisis. As well as providing practical help for residents, the members have carried on campaigning for improvements to help not just themselves, but people in other areas that are at high risk of flooding. We've got three awards left, and then with the fourth, our very special award tonight. On to our next award, which is 14, isn't it? It is award number 14, which is the Love Where You Live Award. Now, this award, it recognises the fantastic role individuals and groups play in making Barnsley a great place to play, to study, to work and to live. As is always the case, it's always an incredibly popular award, which makes the difficult decision for the judges unbearable. Attracting more nominations than any other category, which clearly goes to demonstrate how much pride people take in our hometown. Sponsoring this category is the Love Where You Live team from Barnsley Council, whose role it is to work alongside volunteers and groups, inspiring them to take a pride in their neighborhood. It's Love Where You Live. Let's take a look at the nominees. The finalists are Carlton Marsh Wildlife Group, Chris Fox, Sarah Dewey. The wildlife lovers have turned a desolate stretch of land into a thriving nature reserve. Cliff Gorman and Keith Bannister began the group in the 1970s and have since cleaned the water and introduced wildlife back to the area over the best part of five decades. After we persuaded Barnsley Council in 1976 to make it a nature reserve, uh, we decided to uh, get together as a group and record on wildlife and manage habitat. We've been doing that ever since. Just recently, over the last two years, we've been involved in one project to remove scrub from this particular area, about five acres, and uh, that's what we've been doing the last two years, and it's been a big job, but we've got there. We actually started watching Carlton Marsh in the very early 70s, probably about 71. So it didn't just happen immediately, you know, we had to go out and make inquiries through British Railways as was. It, it's, it's, a, it's a flooded valley, it's been flooding for about 150 years, and it was just covered in reeds and silt. And gradually we got some machinery and through grants to open certain areas up to, to make scrapes. Therefore it's good for waders and wildfowl. And on, on right hand side, on embankment, it were a railway. And there used to be railway wagons stored on the early 70s. And all this now is under nature reserve. Dedicated Cuddeth resident Chris formed a community group to help bring the local community together. He's the chairman of the Cuddeth Business and Community Together Group and has organised fairs, bunny trails, walking maps and helped raise money to install Christmas lights along Barsley Road. So some of the many projects that we've done are we've done three Cuddeth Christmas fairs, we've done three Cuddeth bunny trails, we've done two calendars, no, three calendars, Cuddeth calendars 
and uh, recent projects include the landmark heritage stone which has been installed in the public area, five new stone faces and the Paul Samuel Goose mosaic artwork which is displayed in the store. Um, I, I just think it's important to put, well, the reason I set up the group is because I felt it was important to put a little something back into the village. Um, I think it's, it's good to get involved locally with these projects and whether or not you own a business there or you're a resident, I think the more you can do to make these places a little bit better really helps to improve the area. I think community is important to me but it's kind of something where I kind of almost fell into it and then because so many people joined in and we had such great support from the community, it snowballed and more and more by everybody working together, we, the project just kind of was successful. So I, I think in that way, it's not just about me, it's about everybody working together uh, as a group, as the volunteers, that's really helped the projects come to, to life. While most people will want to spend their retirement relaxing, Sarah has dedicated her time to picking up litter throughout Smithies. The 62-year-old became one of the first members of the Barnsley Main Heritage Group, which began in 2016. During the lockdown, Sarah set up the Dern Valley Country Park Group and has helped to inspire more than 40 volunteers to transform their local area. I moved to Barnsley five years ago and was struck by the litter. Got involved with Barnsley Main and then somebody said, is there potential for a group in Dern Valley Park? So lockdown, first lockdown, presented an opportunity to find the answer to that question. There's a lot that needs improving in life, and I think I've tried to take on little bits like Barnsley Main or Durham Valley Park, where you can see the difference you make. We've got over 60 litter pickers active in the, just in Durham Valley Park, and most of the people I talk to as I litter pick, which is how I recruited them, they weren't happy about the mess in the litter, but I said, but we can be part of the solution. So we all just litter pick as we go along. It's just become part of life in the park now. Now my hope in the long term is that the council will work with the volunteers across the borough to set up a forum so the communication and systems become smoother um, and that litter picking becomes part of life. Of course, let's hear it there for all of our nominees. To present this award then for Love Where You Live, would you please welcome Councillor Jenny Platt. Go on, Jenny, welcome to the stage. And the winner then of the Love Where You Live Award this year is... Carlton Marsh Wildlife Group. Now this group has been working tirelessly for almost half a century. This is the comments from the judges. Their commitment to improving Carlton Marsh is to be commended and public acknowledgement of this is long overdue, making them the winners tonight of the Love Where You Live Award, Carlton Marsh Wildlife Group. Okay, not many awards to go this evening. On to our next award, which is Volunteer 
of the year. Now this category is sponsored by Waits Property Service, who are new to the Proud of Barnsley sponsorship. Now the company focuses on housing a non-residential property, maintenance, fit out and refurbishment, along with facilities management across the UK. All finalists in this category, the volunteer of the year, put others before themselves. They devote themselves to a cause, not because they get paid for it, but quite simply because they believe it in. Let's have a look at this year's nominees for Volunteer of the Year. Volunteer, Volunteer of the Year. The finalists are Sue Micklethwaite, Pat Paget, The Family of Hope at Pickersgill. Chairman of the Royston Watch Crime and Prevention Group, Sue has delivered care packages to residents in need throughout the pandemic. Not only does she help tackle crime in her area, she's also set up an initiative to provide clothing to Afghan refugees. Originally we were Royston Watch Crime Safety and Awareness Group, just making the village aware of crimes, making them aware of what was happening in the village. When the pandemic struck, we decided to change strategies. Uh, we needed to do for our village what we could. Royston Co-op offered us a base as a food bank. From there, we collected donations, monetary and food from residents, members of our group and local businesses. Through the pandemic, for 18 months, we've delivered 5,000 care packages on a daily basis to the village vulnerable, needy and elderly. Uh, we also teamed with two local pharmacies and delivered about 1,500 prescriptions for them. And we've also done a lot of personal shops. We also have a very successful litter picking group I am the chairperson, but I'm surrounded by a fantastic committee, fantastic volunteers who make this all possible. They inspire me to carry on and do what I'm doing. Pat has been a volunteer in the St Helens Ward for more than half a decade. She's led the Girl Guides and has hosted church events, all in the name of a local community. Not just that, but Pat chaired the community group, Addersley Cares, and has acted as the Barsley Commissioner for the Girl Guides. I've been a guide from being a guide, and I've been a guide leader for 54 years. Uh, I started the guide group in Addersley um, in 1971, and I've been the leader in charge there um, ever since, and I'd hundreds, maybe thousands of girls through the guides. Um, during that period I've obviously taken them camping, I've taken them abroad to Switzerland, Luxembourg and been a leader for a group uh, that went to India. So we've offered guides opportunities that perhaps they wouldn't have got otherwise. And I think it's something girls need to be able to um, do their own thing. We offer a safe space for them to come and express themselves. They get involved with all sorts of things. They learn new skills. They have opportunities that perhaps they wouldn't otherwise have. People in the past have held me and therefore I think we have to put something back and therefore working in the community is a way of doing it and helping people that need it. Um, and it just, it's just a way of life. She may not yet have turned one, but Hope Pickersgill has already undergone life-saving surgery. The tot was born with heart problems and had her first open heart surgery at just four months old. And since then, her family have been fundraising for the charities that have helped keep her alive. Her family have taken part in sponsored walks, skydives, and organised family fund days in order to raise funds for the Children's Heart Surgery Fund and the Sick Children's Trust. Their hard work certainly paid off as they raised more than £11,000 to be split between the charities, but they're now looking forward to next year to continue their fundraising efforts 
in the hope of helping other families like Hope's. So there's the nominees for Volunteer of the Year. And to present the award, please welcome from Waits Property Services, Christian Lunn. Hi, Christian, welcome to the stage. Right, okay, let's find out the winner in the Volunteer of the Year Award. The winner is... Pat Patchett. Tonight's winner, Pat Padgett, a massive part of Pat's life has been spent helping out in various groups and organisations as we've just seen in the video as well. Judges saw this as a lifelong commitment to volunteering and thought was incredibly worthy of being winner of this award. Volunteer of the Year at the Proud of Barnsley 2021 Awards, Pat Padgett. of the year and thanks to uh, Christian Lund from Waits Property Services now, for presenting the award. This has been an incredible night so far. Just two awards left now. One of those will be our special recognition award. Before we get to that, if we could just have some order now while we get through the last two awards, that'd be fantastic. We've got some great stories for you to listen to. So this is for our charity fundraising team. This award was launched in response to the sheer number and calibre of nominations received for the charity fundraiser category. <laughs> Just have your attention, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It seemed unfair to pit individuals against each other and against teams. So this award recognises that when it comes to fundraising. It can often be more than just a solo effort as well. The award is sponsored by Henry Boot, the construction giant that's a major partner with Barnsley Council for delivering the new look town centre, which does look oh incredible. Word. Doesn't it just? Absolutely Doesn't it? incredible. It really is. I, I walk through town and I just go, wow, this is just... just Amazing, yeah. isn't it? Stunning. We are really leading the way in South Yorkshire here in Barnsley. So for Charity Fundraising Team, let's take a look at the nominees. Charity Fundraising Team. The finalists are Ali Hunton and David Armitage, Barnsley Live, Eastfield Athletic. This volunteering duo have helped to distribute more than £70,000 worth of donations to staff and patients at Barsley Hospital during the pandemic. They delivered 3,800 sets of scrubs, 4,000 hand creams, 2,400 loungewear sets, 17,300 drinks and snacks, 700 lip balms and 69 tablet computers. Um, along with David, we worked through the pandemic helping distribute the goods that the hospital charity had raised through various forms of gifts from the Barnsley public, um, including an Amazon wish list. There were lots of things, uh, things like uh, snacks, toiletries, anything really that would help the staff feel a little bit happier during the troubled times we had uh, throughout the pandemic. Um, but we were overwhelmed by the generosity of the, of the Barnsley people and companies as well. Uh, and the job of myself and Ali and a few other people was to distribute this to staff in the hospital and to patients. Uh, so we became like the public face of the movement of the generosity to the staff of the hospital. Um, yeah, but it's nice to bring a smile to people's faces. And it's the generosity of the powers of people uh, that has allowed all that. We were just the conduits. Absolutely. A group of musicians didn't let being unable to play live music stop them from raising money for charity. Artists usually involved in the Barsley Live event got together virtually to create a charity single to raise funds for Barsley Hospital.
The football team helped to raise more than £3,000 in memory of founder Michael Porter, who died at the age of just 24. Every year since his death, the team have fundraised for local causes that help promote mental health across the borough. Yeah, so uh, we're a Sunday league side, um, you know, we've been going for about seven or eight years, and um, we decided a couple of years ago to raise money for our um, old manager who sadly passed away very young. Um, what better way to honour his memory than to um, start doing charity fundraisers so it sort of culminated in us doing this half marathon. Some of us did the half marathon and some of us did a 100 mile bike ride and we toured all the professional grounds in South Yorkshire. We raised just over £3,000 uh, through obviously mainly through social media and things like that because obviously we're in the middle of a lockdown so and obviously, because it was locked down and it was all about mental health, a lot of people got on board and supported us, which were really positive to see. Every year we try and do something to raise money in his memory. And, you know, I couldn't think of a better cause um, than touts that is for mental health in young people, because at the time we were a group of young people, and I'm sure some of suffered in silence. Um, whereas now, you know, knowing that there's charities and things like that that can help people who hopefully never go through that situation, but. If they do, at least there's the support that we've helped by doing this charity uh, in place in Barnsley. What a shortlist, what a shortlist. Now, to present this award, you please welcome from Henry Boot, Rhino Laughlin. Okay, the winner at the Charity Fundraising Team Award this year, the award goes to... Barnsley Life! Bring yourselves forward. The judges' comments, the live event sector faced extinction in lockdown. Believe me, it did. But these committed musicians wanted to do something not just to help each other, but to show their support for local charities as well, which is why they are the winners of the Charity Fundraising Team Award this year, Barnsley Live! There's a lot of them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the team for Barnsley Life. Back to it before I let you all go. Just dip, James, just dip the music for me slightly. Before I let you all go, I've been asked to mention somebody who isn't here tonight and who would be if he was still with us, who's going to be dedicated, the next year's going to be dedicated to Luke Palferman. Tell us just a little bit about Luke to anyone who doesn't know who Luke is. Well, Luke Palferman <laughs> spent a lot of time being a, uh, being a volunteer for Barnsley Live over the years. And uh, one of the best people to speak about him is someone next to me. He'll be upset. He'll be upset for him. But you know what? Anybody in this room know Luke Palfreyman? Yes. You know what? Next year, Bands Alive is dedicated to Luke Palfreyman. So this year, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Anyway, cheers. Well done. Wow. All the team for Bands Alive. I was there on that day, and I've still got the hangover to prove it. I can tell you, just a few weeks ago, it was amazing. Oh gosh! And man down. <laughs> oh goodness me! Oh. That's the way to celebrate. 
It was behind Honestly, the camera. It was, it was behind the camera as well. We're not getting you being framed on oh, that. Oh, gosh. <sighs> We're not getting 250 quid off Beadle. I was going to say, actually. <laughs> congratulations to all at Barnsley Live. So, we've now reached the final award of the night. Please, everyone, I know, you know, you can become at award events a little bit restless, you might have some drinks. Can we just get some order in the room if that's okay? Please, everyone, I know it's our final award of the night and it's a really important one, so shh. If everyone can just be quiet, that would be amazing. It's always the case I'm kept in the dark about who this award is being presented to. So trust me when I say I know nothing, I know nothing. But luckily, I do know a couple of people who do know what it's all about. So to present this year's Proud of Barnsley Special Recognition Award, please welcome on stage the MP for Barnsley East, Stephanie Peacock, and from the sponsors, the Lamp Room Theatre, Jack Land Noble. Tonight, I am here to help present an award that, quite honestly, I wish I did not have to. That's not because the person we're about to honour isn't truly deserving of this award. I'm sure, once you've heard their incredible story, you'll agree nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, I hope you realise that no awards, no standing ovations, no invitations to Downing Street and no honours from the Queen could ever make up for what this incredibly resilient, selfless and inspirational person has had to endure. I'm certain the recipient of this award would much rather have been able to carry on with their old life away from all the limelight. But one horrible day in October 2014, that peaceful, quiet life would change forever. It took just 15 minutes for my life to end and my existence to begin. I was married to Darren for 16 years. In the beginning, it was all roses and romance, but after the children were born, he changed and he became controlling, aggressive, and I began to suffer from domestic abuse. So I took the decision to separate and I moved to my mum's. In domestic abuse, a lot of it for men is, is the control because he'd lost that and the boys didn't want to see him. Then the harassment started. Despite me telling the courts that I knew he was capable of killing or hurting the boys, the unsupervised contact was allowed and it was set for five hours a week. In the end, he didn't need five hours to do what he wanted to do. It took just 15 minutes. The 22nd of October in 2014, the day started just like any other and as I dropped Jack off at school I thought to myself he's growing so tall and so broad he's becoming a, a young man. I then went and dropped Paul off at school and he'd shout over his shoulder to infinity and beyond and those were the last words that we were ever to speak. I was just about to have my tea and there was a knock on the door and as I opened the door there was a local policeman on the doorstep and I saw by his face that something was wrong and there was a police car with the lights flashing and I said, what's he done? And he said to me, you need to come with me now. Uh, we need to go to Sheffield Children's Hospital. There's been an incident at the house, there's been a fire. So I got in the car and we drove to Sheffield Children's Hospital. I then found out that on their unsupervised access visit, Darren lured them up to the attic with a new train set. And whilst Jack and Paul were up there, he'd even put a bowl of sweets out for them. He set 14 separate fires with petrol and he barricaded the property as well to make sure the boys absolutely couldn't get out. Jack was a little boy, a gentle boy, with the heart and courage of a lion. And it was Jack's strength that pulled Paul 
across to the hatch of the attic. Unfortunately, the little boy just fell backwards and he fell down into the flames. And as he lay on the landing, the fireman cradled him and picked him up. And he found the courage to say to that fireman, my dad did this and he did it on purpose. I held Paul in my arms and held him so tightly and he fell asleep in my arms. Then I went over to Jack and Jack was still fighting, bless him, because he would suffered 56% burns after being in theatre for around 14 hours. His body could take no more and that massive beating brave heart finally stopped. Again, I had to hold him in my arms as he fell asleep. So I've got the Child First campaign and I'm fighting to change the domestic abuse laws so that the courts don't issue contact at any cost. I hope the legacy for the boys is that these laws go through and give children a voice, and give children a chance in life at the moment, I go to where they sleep and I touch their stone gently and I whisper, I'm trying. But one day, I want to be able to go to where they sleep and touch their stone and say to them, you know what boys, I've done it. And I've done it for you. True to the word she gave to her precious sons Paul and Jack and earlier this year she finally won her campaign to protect children from suffering at the hands of abusive parents a very personal fight that will help save hundreds of innocent lives it has been an unimaginably painful seven years for Claire and I know you will all agree her tireless, tireless campaigning makes her the most worthy recipient of this very special Proud of Barnsley Award. Please welcome onto the stage Claire Thrussell, MBE. say um, that's the last time I believe Andrew when he says you just come in for a meal <laughs> um, firstly it's a complete honor to win an award alongside such amazing people of Barnsley tonight has really inspired me as a person and I think so many people are quick to run down Barnsley, but actually, we have some amazing people in Barnsley. And uh, it's been an amazing evening. It's been a privilege to be here 
And in 2017, I won the Triumph Against Adversity Award. And in the years that's followed, I've still had that adversity. And I've still had to fight. It's taken five years to get the new domestic abuse bill through. And finally, children across the country, including Barnsley, now are recognized as victims of domestic abuse. They have legislation. And I think what we have to recognize is victims of domestic abuse. It stays with the victim. It doesn't go with the perpetrator. And there's always that fight that you're never good enough. You're never going to get there. But you know, if you have a dream, if you have a, an aim to help people in life, then you can achieve it. Thank you. <laughs> In 2017, when I stood on this stage, I was still on my knees, and today I'm just about standing. And that's thanks to everybody in Barnsley, everybody in Penniston, the whole area. And I dedicate my MBE to everybody that keeps me standing, for everybody that signed the campaign, for everybody that supports me and shows me friendship and care, that keeps me going. And one day, soon, I'll be able to go to the boys and say, you know what, we've not just changed the law, we've made children's lives safer. And that's coming. That is coming. I made a promise to two boys, and I held them as they died in my arms. And I promised them that no other parent would have to do what I did. We're not there 100% yet, but we're almost there. And one day soon, I will be able to go up to them and say that we've done it. But we've done it as a whole, to everybody that's signed the campaign, to everybody that supports me, to everybody that supports the legacy charity Heads Together Barnsley. I say thank you, and I say thank you from the bottom of a shattered heart because it really is you guys that's held me upright and it's really you guys that's kept me going and hoping and praying that this day would come so i want to thank everybody here and i know if jack and paul were here now they would say thank you too two lives taken but they live on in me and they live on in moments like this. So all I can say is, love you, Jack and Paul, and thank you. <laughs>
to be proud of Barnsley. Absolutely. I mean, if, if, if anything, over the last 18 months, if we've learned anything, it's to appreciate and love each other even more. And we've certainly done that tonight. What an incredible evening. Thank you for making this event what it is. We look forward to seeing you next year. On behalf of Steph and myself, lots of love. Take care and good night. Have a safe journey home. Good night. <laughs>